Oh, okay. All right, thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, as with others, I'm going to present you with several sentences. Embedded within those sentences are going to be multiple errors, which I'll ask you to correct. Um, now first, I'll read the sentence to you, ask that you pause the video to make your corrections, and resume only after you're ready to edit with me. If there are any incongruencies or any inconsistencies, or perhaps you see some uh, corrections that were better how should I say, uh, better use to express the meaning in whichever sentence we encounter, please feel free to use the chat section and the video below. Uh, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, now I will read, as I mentioned, the first sentence to you, and I'll ask that you pause to make your corrections. The first sentence reads, Come on, Linda said to her team, we may win this year game if we try more hard. Go ahead and pause and resume when ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me switch to my red pen. Okie doke, let's go ahead and scan. Always at the beginning, I can see that uh, I am expecting to see a capital letter to start a sentence, which it is right there. So, come on, Linda said to her team. Here I have Linda said, which means I'm attributing speech to a certain clause or section of the sentence. In this case, based on how I'm reading it, come on was said. And again, I wrap those in quotes because I'm showcasing dialogue. Again, here I've attributed that Linda has said it, therefore I recognize that it is dialogue requiring the use of quotation marks. So, come on, Linda said to her team. However, there should be a pause. So, come on, Linda said to her team. Although, now that I'm reading it further, I can tell that Linda, or rather assume that Linda is likely showing strong emotion or expressing a strong emotion, and to convey that, rather than use the comma that I placed there, Instead, I will use an exclamation mark to showcase that energy. Come on, Linda being a proper noun. Recognizing this as a proper noun, I know that I need to capitalize the first letter. Come on, Linda said to her team. Pause, comma. We may win this here game. Now, this and here are redundant. This implies a specific moment or a specific instance. Here is doing something similar. It's referring to a specific location, or in this case, a specific instance. Rather than use both simultaneously, which again is redundant, it's repetitive, I'm going to go ahead and strike here and replace it instead with this. Not replace it. I will use instead the word this. So it reads, we may win this game if we try, and then here I have more hard. No. So harder. We're going to combine those two. Let me switch back to my red pen. Harder. If we try harder, not more hard. And it looks like we do end also with an exclamation mark to continue showcasing this energy. However, going back to reread it, I see, come on, Linda said to her team, comma, we may win this. So now what I'm noticing is after the comma, this is likely what Linda continues to say. Therefore, it is considered a part of this dialogue. As a result, I will need to capture that using quotation marks. We may win this game if we try harder. And I will close the final, or excuse me, the final part of that sentence with quotation marks uh, because it all seems to be a part of what she is saying. Okay, we're going to go ahead and shuffle along to the second sentence. Now, in the second sentence, which reads, Mark's going to do a summer internship at a company in Louisville, Kentucky. Please keep in mind that there are proper nouns to be on the lookout for. Uh, you may not be familiar with it, but hopefully, you, you know, you will, you'll be able to recognize the proper nouns. All right, go ahead and get started. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, starting first, beginning of our sentence, and a proper noun, which does require a capital. And looking at it, that seems to be the case, so we're fine. So Mark's going to. So Mark is actually the name of this individual. And I believe what was meant to be said here is Mark is going to. So I'm going to go ahead and strike the S, which was appended to Mark, and replace it by showcasing that with a caret, the editing sign, the caret, to insert. Uh, is, in this case, going to, not the number to, which was T-W-O, but the preposition going to, do a summer internship. Okay, so he is going to do a summer internship, which works, not the most tactful of sentences, but it works. So Mark is going to do or take on. I'm going to go ahead and replace that with take hyphen on. 
Again, this is more of a style choice. If you had some different variation of this that works as well, please leave it in the comment section below. So Mark is going to take on a summer internship at a company in Louisville, Kentucky. Now, hopefully you noticed that Louisville and Kentucky are proper nouns. Uh, Louisville in this case is capitalized, however, Kentucky is not. Uh, also, I hope that you recognize that Louisville is the name of a city, while Kentucky is the state that that city is in. To separate, I'm sorry, the rule of thumb is you always separate the city from the state using a comma. So I'm going to insert the comma between them. And I believe we are good to go. All right, we're going to continue into our, or onto our third sentence. The third sentence reads, because workers are making repairs to the house next door, it's very noisy right now. Uh, again, please pause the video, make your corrections, and resume when ready. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm not sick, it's just dry. All right, let's go ahead and scanning at the beginning. I can see that the first word is not uh, capitalized. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and capitalize it. Uh, so because workers are making repairs is the word that I see. Uh, so they're making repairs to the house next door. It is very, it's very noisy right now. I'm going to assume that this, or the author of the sentence meant to say repair. So to repair. Re means to do something again. That's our prefix. Uh, pair in this case means to join or to bring together. So it's going to bring together again. They're going to fix essentially the house next door. Uh, to the house next door. So because workers are making repairs, repairs, excuse me, oops, how do I undo this? Bear with me. Okie dokie. Repairs to the house next door, pause, comma, it's very noisy right now. Yeah, now you'll notice that it sounds like the contraction. However, when reading it, it's not written as a contraction, which requires uh, an apostrophe to join two of our words. And if I were to add that apostrophe, I now go from it's as in ownership, uh, meaning a noun in the sentence owns or is in possession of something, to it is, which is the contraction I'm looking for. So it is very noisy or it's very noisy right now, period, to end our statement with a period. All right, we're going to continue forward on our fourth and final sentence. Here it reads, kiteboarding is a extreme sport that are very exciting to watch from the beach. Please pause, make your corrections, and resume when ready. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, again, scanning the sentence. At the beginning, I see kite boarding. Uh, this is in the name of a sport. Boarding is like, uh, think of um, some kind of board, like a board, like a surfboard, like you would ride on the water. Kite boarding is similar, it's a surfboard that. Uh, where, where you are pulled along using a kite tied to a tether, which is actually the name of the sport. Therefore, boarding, being a part of that name, requires a capital letter since now it's being treated as a uh, proper noun. So kite boarding is a extreme. Now you'll notice the article A. It's an indefinite article. Uh, however, it's being used improperly, in the, or excuse me, it's spelled incorrectly, this version at least, because the word following it begins with a vowel, in this case the letter E. And the rule is to choose an indefinite article based on, between A or AM, in this case it needs to be AM, only if the word following it begins or sounds like a vowel. Uh, so kiteboarding is an extreme sport. Extreme is spelled incorrectly. Here they have the double vowel E. Instead it should be EA. Is an, oh no, no it's not. Gosh, and I got that on camera. It should be E-X-T-R-E-M-E. -E. An extreme, which means um, like a dangerous, a dangerous sport, that are, hmm, incorrect here for the to be verb, it should be that is very exciting to watch from the beach. And again, here we have a double E. Uh, it makes the same sound, but we're looking for E-A, from the beach, period. And I do not see any other corrections to make, so let me go ahead and stop my recording and ensure that it has saved. Yes, it has, that's great. Um, if you found this video helpful or content like this helpful, please do me a favor and like it if you would. Uh, otherwise, in addition to that, if you would also subscribe, it would help to broaden my reach on this platform. I would very much appreciate that. 
Um, otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next one where you continue to practice your language skills and we will do so together uh, because it's a journey. All right. Thank you again. Bye.